Today's conversation is on creating your own magic words to bring yourself into a desired state of consciousness by recalling one word. Now, the applications for this are endless. I apply it personally when relating with others, information, and it can also be applied to maintaining your flow, creative endeavors, entrepreneurship, etc. I say sometimes that one word is worth a thousand pictures. Now, this is inspired by the old adage that a picture is worth a thousand words, which from that perspective implies that a single image conveys so much meaning or essence. This is equally true for one word. For example, if we reflect upon one word, let's say prosperity, we shall find that there are many relationships to this word with respect to the different areas of our lives. Relationships, spiritual, physical, intellectual, family, financial, social, career. The word prosperity tends to have individualized meaning, and those meanings could differ from one person to another. The textbook definition of prosperity in Webster's is the condition of being successful or thriving. Now, if I asked 100 people what being successful or thriving means to them, Subjectively, we would discover many different beliefs, proving that this one word has so much subjective meaning alongside the textbook meaning. These subjective, subconscious beliefs express themselves automatically to reveal our relationship with this word in the various areas of our lives related to this word. This word like other words, are thus symbols which carry with them previously associated suggestions and intentions. And since the outer aspects of our lives are symbolic representations of what we subconsciously hold as true, it stands to reason that we could recreate these words into more powerful symbols which we could operate from as we call upon them inside. So we can consciously infuse into any word intention where calling upon it flashes upon our mind's eye an entire world of meaning related to it all while entering us mentally into that desired state from which all related emotions and behaviors flow, all arising naturally as reflections of that associated mental state entered into by one single word. This is what I do, for example, with the word ideal or flow or prosperity. The moment I inwardly call upon those single words, everything within my awareness begins to transform instantly to reflect accordingly the intentions I set in association to that word. So let's talk about how you could do this as well. So when we were growing up, some of my friends would sit around and pick one word, whatever it would be. It could be flow, prosperity, ideal. And we would have conversations for about an hour or so about that word, like one would do in a mastermind. We would reflect upon a single word, which would, as a result, uncover ideas, insights, inspirations. And these insights would provide so much valuable application for our creative endeavors or whatever applications we desire. Now, if you read the Master Key System by Charles Hanel, this was actually one of the exercises in the book to sit alone, silence mind and body, and inwardly dwell on the word harmony and all that the word implies for you so deeply and so earnestly that you will be conscious of nothing but harmony within mind. This very act also leaves the impression on the subconscious bringing forth harmony in the outer aspects of life, symbolic representations of that harmony. Now, this very meditation is something that I do till this day from when I learned it back in 2007. For if for some reason this world does not seem to provide the resonant insights true to your vision, let it be and go inside. Meditate on a word like harmony, love, or prosperity, and observe how new insights and answers show up and transform your world. Similar to what we've been discussing, one word like ideal 
calls upon thousands of images or angels, as I call them, to the mind's eye of what implies of the word. As we remain in the state related to that word, while no other conflicting ideas seem to exist in mind at that point. From this premise, our mind is clear and oriented from our vision, uncovering the answers we're looking for within, while also letting the outer world rearrange to reflect our vision. A similar occurrence is when we read a book. We engage inner conversation with the author, and based on how we relate to the information, we may allow certain suggestions to be accepted as true into the subconscious, to the point where when we place the book back on the shelf, the hand that places the book on the shelf feels like a different hand, because we have forever changed. The same is to be said when it comes to exploring the inner consciousness, a repository of all your experiences, knowledge, wisdom, infinite intelligence, and understanding with a one-word query. Information already inherent within is brought to the surface of mind related to the word where when you open up your eyes, the body risen from the meditation feels like a different body. It is still yours, however you have changed. It feels like a different world. Now, I always encourage thinking for yourself, while also being open to new ideas. These new ideas contribute to your vision as you allow space for them to show up inside, while also bringing to awareness the subconscious meanings we have assigned to specific words that appear outside turning the tracks on them as applicable to orient you from your vision if they show up, and also to further explore your inner world as it is the source of all treasures. These ideas, hunches, and inspirations that are brought forth automatically compel you in all changes on your journey as you look neither left nor right for answers, rather inwardly, the cause of it all. For example, one may read an article in which the writer used a certain word in which that word springs in the mind's eye imaginings in which a person identifies with, and as a result, they enter into a related state of mind. They have, in that moment of being open to suggestion, accepted the suggestion and entered into that state. This is one of the many reasons why we like revisiting certain books or poems or even words like harmony or ideal, because as you say them to yourself inside, which is, by the way, what we call sub-vocalization or silent speech while we are reading. We used to teach how to reduce over-dependence on sub-vocalization when I used to do those workshops in partnership with Iris Reading to tap into other pathways of word and mind relationship for accelerated learning. Nevertheless, of the pathways, we still have relationship with words and provided that they relate harmoniously to your vision, all the more power to you. If it appears to sway you, identify the belief behind the swaying and release it with autosuggestion, freeing you from that belief identification once and for all. This is another reason why in Sunday's video, I encourage thinking from the end, from the premise of your vision realized, which releases identification of beliefs no longer in harmony as the changes occur in your world to reflect. Now, this doesn't mean that you always have to be consciously thinking. As a matter of fact, most of the time, I'm flowing with my projects, activities, and that's a lot of times not much conscious thinking. However, rather allowing the subconscious to express, I do suggest being aware as applicable to observe what you are thinking, feeling, and doing so you know what state you're in. And if at any moment you're not in your ideal state of mind, bring yourself back there into your ideal state of mind instantly by mere suggestion of your one word, such as ideal flow, or prosperity. Also a notable mention, you can simply not suggest anything, all the while implying the word flow, ideal, or prosperity by releasing into it or feeling into it, which is a nonverbal suggestion, minus the conscious sub-vocalization, as mentioned earlier, again recalibrating you from your vision. Allow yourself to do one or the other or a combination, whatever works. So how do we get these subjective meanings in our mind in relation to words in the first place? Well, the same way we have accepted suggestions before, consciously or unconsciously. And it is through these same channels where we create our magic words. Now, William Walker Atkinson wrote a wonderful book called 
suggestion and autosuggestion, in which he refers to what he calls the five classes of suggestions. There as follows. So let's relate this over to creating our magic words while also bringing awareness to how subjective meaning is associated to words in general. And I trust you'll find this to be very helpful. Number one, we have the suggestion of authority. He says, suggestion by authority manifests both in the positive authoritative statements directed to the point and also by the spoken or written statements made by those who speak or write with an air of authority. So if someone who is perceived as authoritative suggests subjective meaning to words, we may accept the suggestion without questioning the suggestions. To be a master of your mind and thus the director of your destiny, question all subjective suggestions toward your magic words. Think for yourself, listen to yourself, and trust yourself in relation to your vision. You'll know what suggestions you are accepting or reacting to by how you feel. Always read between the lines. Point number one thus, you are the only authority within creating your own ideal subjective meaning to the magic words. Remember, these words can be called upon as applicable and thus supersede all external suggestions to bring us into our desired state. There is no suggestion outside higher than these inwardly generated magic words. Then we have the suggestion of association. He says, It is very easy for us to associate certain things with certain other things. And we will find that when one of the things is recalled, it will bring with it its associated impressions. So when you experience words which have meaning on their own, and then words strung together in statements, which have thus dimensionalized meaning, be aware of how you think, feel, and behave as a result of exposure. And if undesirable, say your one magic word, which we'll create in a moment, to release yourself from identification to the associations, which transcends all of what is being suggested which then recalibrates yourself as a result to your desired state to operate from your vision as the outer transmutes by your word and changes accordingly. Then we have suggestion of habit. He says, The suggestion of habit, this form of suggestion is closely allied to the preceding phase. Suggestion of association, in fact, some might consider it to be merely a branch of the latter. But we feel that there is a decided difference in the operation of the two phases, and accordingly prefer to treat this one as forming a separate and distinct phase. Of course, all habit is an association with something in the past, but suggestion of habit may arise from an original cause of suggestion of authority, suggestion of association, suggestion of repetition, suggestion of imitation, or else from an original decision of the intellect resulting from correct reasoning. The former act or thought acts as a suggestive outside influence, although it belongs to one's own mentality. So simply put, in relation to today's discussion, a change in mentality is brought forth by meditation on a single word and then calling it forth as applicable and doing this gives it more power. When we use it as applicable and acknowledge the changes, it also strengthens the belief in the word accordingly. Because, again, each word is worth a thousand pictures, angels, as I call them, brought forth in relation to your one word, such as prosperity, harmony, or ideal, or whatever word you want, to purify the mind from unrelated ideas. This thus becomes a habit while adding power to the transmutation of the outer aspects of life as the word is recalled in mind. Then we have suggestion of repetition. He says, this form of suggestion may seem to be very much akin to the preceding phase, suggestion of habit, but there is a marked distinction and difference. Suggestion of habit has its power imparted to it by the habitual repetition of an act or thought on the part of the individual, while suggestion of repetition gains its power by the repetition of a suggestion from some outside object or person. It is the constant dripping of water wearing away the stone. 
a suggestion which passes you without much attention or consideration. When first made, will gain both attention and consideration from you if it be repeated sufficiently often and in the right manner. So thus, as a whole, awareness is key. Observe how you feel in relation to words in general and you'll discover the meaning given to the words which can be brought to peace by autosuggestion, such as prosperity, for example. If one reflects upon prosperity and reveals that they had once associated a suggestion of undesirable meaning, like they don't deserve it, they can now release that belief via a statement to themselves that would imply that prosperity is already theirs and it shows up everywhere they go. For example, they could say, prosperity is a natural way of being which reveals itself in all areas of my life. Then upon acceptance of that suggestion, as they meditate upon prosperity, thousands of images of prosperity will flash in their imagination, which then plays out in their lives in some shape or form. Then we have suggestion of imitation. He says this form of suggestion, while being in itself a distinct phase of suggestion, nevertheless has a very close relationship with the several other forms of suggestion. In the acceptance of suggestion of authority, there is to be found an unconscious imitation of the mental attitude of the person asserting the authority. Examples are found in schools of philosophies, theories, thought, and religion. So this is essentially looking around to see what others are doing and as a result of what others are doing or how they're thinking. And in relation to our conversation, it's forming conclusions in relation to words so again, I put emphasis here on forming your own relationship to words subjectively beyond the commonly agreed upon objective meaning in which then from doing this, you'll find it easy to reveal the answers to your questions in relationship with your vision within, listening to yourself, thinking for yourself, and trusting yourself, and no word shall sway you, but rather further affirm that you already are your ideal now. So in practice, let's apply all this. Let's pick a word like harmony, ideal, or prosperity, whatever word you'd like. Number one, turn off all distractions and reflect upon the word for 10 to 30 minutes. Allow your imagination to soar upon the word. Allowing your imagination to be filled with ideas that elevate you in harmony with your chosen word. Number two, Acknowledge that all of these pictures spawned from the one word can be called upon during undesirable circumstances to transmute the circumstance into a desirable one. So I wouldn't overthink this part. Simply accept that suggestion. Number three, meditate upon this word regularly, giving it more power. Now for the application of the word. If you find yourself in a position where you feel at the effect of circumstances outside of your mind, call upon the powers behind the word in your mind by speaking the word inside. Do the act in your own mind and notice the shift inside and then observe as it all changes outside. Then to add to the power, you can acknowledge the changes even to the most subtle degree outside as a result of calling upon the magic word. By doing this, you also give your inner speech more power. And so continue applying this word whenever applicable. As you say this one word internally, it will instantly fill up your mind. You might not even be aware of it, of how fast it happens, of all those related images, and then some. And the results is what we're interested in, is the changes that occur externally. I've seen people, environment, circumstance, and even information change right in front of my presence by applying this. And I trust you'll find the same benefit in your life as well. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. We can say, one single mantra carries me into my desired world as worlds within worlds exist within me, all called upon by my word. Each word calls upon its corresponding world chosen at will to transform my entire existence and reflect accordingly, understanding thus every word which I meditate upon shall not return to me void as the flow-based blissful way is paved in harmonious relationship with all. 
If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.